this video is going to be a little bit different. In the first like third of the video, I'm going to show you a tiny bit of North Carolina and the reason for that is it was very cold outside and there wasn't much near me within walking distance. So the latter part of the video will be me uh, kind of explaining what it was like to apply to be a flight attendant with uh, my airline and then what the interview process and timeline was. So if you're not interested in North Carolina and you want to jump ahead, go ahead and jump ahead in this video. Around the seven minute marker will be the information that you're looking for. One of the flight attendants I'm flying with, she's such an awesome lady. She's convinced that this hotel used to be a hospital and I kind of get where she's coming from. Um, so let me show you like what she's saying was a hospital. So she was saying that she can imagine down here that this is where the desks were, people would come and go and check in. The outside looks a lot like a hospital, I'll show you the outside. And then these are all patient rooms. So then we go to check in and I told her, I responded like, this was a hospital. Like, isn't that a little bizarre? These windows, I mean, it does look like a hospital. But then you come in and it's, this is a suite. So it's very big. So there is a sofa, a chair. There's a nice TV. I hope it's a smart TV. I wanna watch, finish watching a movie on Netflix. I don't think it is, no. A little dining area, a wet bar, a refrigerator, a microwave. Nothing too fancy about the bathroom or shower. It's just your standard. The shower in Cancun was so nice. Just your standard. Separate bedroom. So closet, in-room safe, iron, extra bedding, uh, a desk, another TV, single bed, but it has a door so you can close that off for privacy. And then let's see our view. It was very woodsy driving up here and flying in, you could see lots of trees. Um, so very woodsy. Okay, so this hotel isn't really near anything, but there are some places to eat across the street. So that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to go do. I'm gonna find something to eat. So the hotel did give me a list of places that are like a seven minute walk and places that are literally across the street. I think I'm just gonna stick for across the street because I only have 10% life on my phone and it's cold out here. So I'm sorry, this is all of Raleigh that you're going to get to see because I can only go where my feet take me. It's not very far today, but nonetheless, this is my flight attendant vlog for Raleigh in North Carolina. So she said across the street, I kind of feel awkward because there's no sidewalk and I'm literally walking in the street. Don't know whether I should walk on the side where traffic is coming head on or on the side where traffic is going away. Usually you go in the walking direction of traffic, but there's like a bush right there, really nowhere for me to go. Aha, look, we have a sidewalk. Okay, I feel better, except why does that sign say wrong way? I'm going to walk on the sidewalk until I have to cross, but I think that's the plaza up there where the restaurants are. And there's a subway. So I think I'll go to the subway. It's only 5.41. It's getting dark already but we're past the winter solstice so the days are getting longer but look at these woods there's like woods everywhere is it the wood or is it the woods the wood or the woods look at the sunset hi sunset i see tesla chargers right here and a little embankment. I wonder if I can just hike up over that hill or if I have to go all the way down and around.
I was gonna go that way, but there's people sitting in their Teslas charging them, and I don't want them to get spooked like I'm a, some weird person like walking up on them as they charge your cars. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I found another opening. I think I'm just gonna be like a civilized person and not go do the shortcut and just go where that car just turned without headlights. Yeah, that car did not have headlights on, so I'm glad that I'm not walking in the street. Voila, we've arrived. Here's a little shopping center. There is a Bass Pro Shop, a Subway, fast food restaurant, a Peruvian place, a couple of chicken places, an Italian market all the way at the very corner. Okay, so that's all of Raleigh that I am probably going to see this trip. Actually, I'm pretty certain that's all I'm going to see. It is 6.14 p.m. It's dark out already. It is 44 degrees outside. It's just so strange that yesterday I was in sunny, warm Cancun, 77 degree weather, I think. And here it's in the 40s and it's cold. I brought my parka. So on the same three day work trip, I packed a bathing suit and a parka. That's just, you never know where you're gonna go. Okay, so since I couldn't really show you much of Raleigh, I thought I would give you a little bit of insight of how, a little tidbit of how I became a flight attendant. Um, I really, really, really love my job. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be a flight attendant. When the company opened up to accepting candidates and resumes, I submitted it. Um, that was in August of 2021. And then I think 30 days after that, I received a response saying that they were interested. I passed like the preliminary. I believe they may have sent me an assessment if I'm remembering correctly, I interviewed with three major airlines and all of these happened around the same time. So I believe they may have sent me an assessment um, and like 30 days after when I sent in my resume, August 2021. Then in December, I was in December of 2021, I was invited to do a group interview and this was um, over i don't know some platform some web-based platform and i was there with i think like 10 other candidates and one interviewer so we were asked three different questions and we each took turns um answering and um then shortly after that i think a few days later a couple days later I was invited to go to a face-to-face -face interview at their headquarters that was in January of 2022. So I went to the face-to-face -face interview and um, that was nerve-wracking. You either pick the morning session or the afternoon session and they do book you positive space and they fly you out there. Um, but you are with a, a whole bunch of other people that are flying in from all of, over the country and in some, in some cases other parts of the world. And you're all convening there for the same position. You know, they're hiring multiple, but everyone wants to be a flight attendant. Um, and from the moment that you walk in, you are being watched, possibly even on the airplane you're being watched. So you have to be on your toes. You have to, you know, be mindful of the way that you're carrying yourself, the way that you're speaking, the way that you're sitting, the way that you're interacting with people. Um, so, you know, I, for the moment I walked in, introducing myself to other candidates, asking where they're from and just being warm and friendly and open because they have eyes in the room watching everyone. Shortly after that, you are ushered into this big like meeting room within their complex. And you have these different recruiters from different areas of the aviation or flight attendant field. 
and they speak to you and they tell you about the company and they break you up into groups and you're sitting in tables of groups uh, and there are multiple groups in this big room and you have like one moderator per table. And so the moderator posed a question and the question was, if you could go anywhere, anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? And then so the moderator, we went around the table and everyone took turns answering. And when she got to me, I said, if I could go anywhere in the world, it would be Saudi Arabia. And the reason why I picked Saudi Arabia is because I recently saw a YouTube video um, by these YouTubers called Yes Theory in which they traveled to Saudi Arabia. And they met with one of their um, like fans, someone that was a fan of their show. In their whole interview process, they asked, what is the misconception about Saudi Arabia and what do you want people to know? And he had said it's a misconception that, you know, Saudi Arabia is this, you know, unsafe place to visit and it's just filled with negative connotations. He said, we're a loving people. We welcome everyone. And it was just, just this loving person with the biggest heart that had so much to share, so much love for humanity. And he talked about his country and it was beautiful. And he just, he wanted to open up, he wanted more tourism there to change that, you know, negative misconception of Saudi Arabia. And so that was, that was my answer. So after we did that, said, okay, we're going to start calling names. If we call your names, we're going to ask that you um, pick up your things and follow us. So they would call people, people would gather their things, they'd go out, they wouldn't come back. People left, you know, in the room still. They'd call more people, those people would go away. Still people left in the room. And then it started, the pool started dwindling. Then they called my name and they said, you don't need to get your things. We just need you to follow us to this room. So they followed them to the room and I was sat in front of two women and they asked me some questions. One of the questions was, you know, they asked, why do you want to be a flight attendant? And I said, well, I want to help people. I work well under pressure. I have worked the nine to five Monday through Friday for most of my life and I'm ready for something new. I want a career where every day is going to be different. I mean, I just something along those lines. And they said, okay, we understand that, you know, you've made that clear, but why do you want to be a flight attendant? And I was like, I just knew that as scary as it was, I needed to strip away my like perfection facade and be honest with them. I just knew it was my moment to just tell them. So I knew, but I didn't know. Like, you know, like I knew within myself the reason why. But I think I was just so afraid to making myself vulnerable. But you know what? I did. For me, it was very terrifying to get real and candid with someone, you know? So I answered and the words just came out. And I said, well, I became a mother at the age of 19. And from that day on, I've had to be responsible I've had to sort of live my life for other people because I had people depending on me and I couldn't let them down. I had to do my best to give them the best life possible. I said, I've worked away. I've done, you know, I've worked diligently, loyally in a career that, you know, was great, but wasn't one that I would have chosen for myself. I've always had this passion to be a flight attendant. I've always had this, you know, inkling in me knowing that that's what I wanted to do. 
but I've never done anything for myself like this. But I said, my children are now older and I just felt this is the time that I needed to pursue it. I wanted to do something for me because this really is what drives me. And so it's something like that. I'm sure that because it was in the moment, I'm sure that it was more eloquently. You know, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to be vulnerable even now. And I know that it was a little deeper than that, you know. And uh, maybe I got a little choked up. I didn't cry, but I know that it was so hard for me to talk about that. So then they, they, I remember the two women looked at each other and they like, they didn't say anything. They just kind of looked at each other and then looked back at me. And then one of the women, she said, Marissa, will you follow me? And I said, sure. So I followed her. We left that big room. She took me outside and like she had this, I think it was an iPad. And she said, I want you to read this. So I read it and it was like, Dear, I don't know, candidate, congratulations, we would like to offer you a conditional job offer, blah, 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 blah. And then, like I read it, but I wasn't processing it. And I looked at her and then she said, so do you accept? And I said, wait, is this a conditional job offer she says yes this is a conditional job offer do you accept and I remember like I just started crying you know and it was like I could not hardly believe what I was hearing because lots of people apply and not a lot gets selected um, and I started tearing up and she started tearing up and I said, yes. And then she had me sign my name on this paper. Then they whisk you away. They do your drug test on the spot. They take your fingerprints off the spot, take your passport and make copies of it on the spot. So they take me down to some other area. Everyone is crying. You know, all these flight attendants that have just been told they've received conditional job offers are crying. Like I, I met this girl we're like walking down to get our drug test together and she's crying and i'm crying i was like congratulations and she's telling me congratulations and i was like i'm so happy for you girl she's like i'm so happy for you too and then she told me my mama would have been so proud and i was like um she's she said and i go really i said why would why and she said because this is what my mom always wanted and this is her dream airline she said and now i've i'm doing it and i was like oh my god congratulations your your mom is going to be so proud of you and she goes my mama isn't with me anymore and then we just like both started crying you know so yeah and um it's just you know at that point you just become a community being a flight attendant is everything that I thought it would be and more. Everyone you fly with, it's like, there's like, it's a community. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like your best friends, like you've known each other forever. Like, I'm not gonna, I, you know, I'm sure that there are days when things aren't always perfect, but I think that we just all know how to move past that. I haven't experienced that yet, personally anything negative i'll make more videos about that because i think that they will be useful hopefully for someone i have some friends that are interested and maybe this will help give them tips because i know i scoured the internet i scoured youtube looking for tips advice and i feel like all of that helped me and i will say that i interviewed years ago for a major airline. They flew me out to Chicago. I interviewed. I didn't get hired then. That's okay. This time around, I feel like I was better prepared. I interviewed with three major carriers in the US and I learned something from each one of those. Not all of them said yes, but I learned something from every interview that I went to. Many flight attendants interviewing, many flight attendants that our flight attendants now, not all of them, most of them didn't get hired their first time around. So don't give up, that's my advice to you. Don't give up, persevere, 
if someone offers you any critiques, if they critique you in any way, or if they offer any advice, just take it, you know? Be open to it. Be open to it. And, um, you know, show your true colors. I, that's what I did. And I feel like had I not got vulnerable in that moment, I don't think I would have got the job. So that's it. Um, I'm going to eat now. I ended up getting Subway. So I'm going to eat my dinner here and I'm going to get to bed early because I'm tired. Um, 4 a.m. this morning was way too early to wake up. So I promised myself I would get to bed early tonight. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like if you would be so kind. If you're interested in seeing more flight attendant daily vlogs, what it's like to be a flight attendant, or what other places are like. I love travel, I love history, so that's why I try to add history or show you what it's like, you know, wherever I am. That's why I do. If you're interested in any of that, hit subscribe. Um, if you want me to talk about anything in particular, leave me a comment. Um, yeah, any questions, let me know. I'm here. Thank you for, if you watch this entire thing, thank you for watching all of it. Thank you for getting as far as you did. Um, yeah, okay, until next time. Bye-bye.